the problem with tactics training it's a little mini series on the problem with tactics training and this is just my opinion it's um, not based on any facts or anything just my own facts based on my own experience doing tactics training doing pa tactics puzzles um, I'm in the middle, still in the middle of a book that's, um, I think it's 101 ways to um, ch checkmate. And it's a book full of these types of puzzles, the tactics, you know, that people use. I'm halfway through it and I have actually gone right back to the beginning and then got to the halfway point to basically practice all of the concepts and the ideas up until the halfway point. So I can do all of the puzzles now from page one up until halfway in the book. So it's a good exercise because what I do is I actually get a real board over the board and I move the pieces into the positions that are highlighted in the book. So I found that quite useful in terms of being able to do that. The reason why I have actually stopped halfway through the book is based on my own personal experience and actually doing puzzles online as well is there comes a point where I look at the position on the board and I say to myself well I don't actually move like that and yes the movements that the answer well that the hints and tips will give you they may show a an exact perfect movement that gets you a type of advantage but it's not the whole be all and end all of the advantages that can be gained on the board so that's where i've come to basically say the problem with doing these types of tactics type puzzles is it takes away your individuality individuality of thought and it's trying to push me into a zone whereby it's saying no that is the only way to move you cannot move any other way because you're not going to get an advantage in the game as you know i'm a positional player and when i'm playing my games they do look ugly and i'm quite pleased they look ugly um, because if I'm playing a human, I'm saying 95% of the people that I would play humanly over the board or online wouldn't necessarily find those perfect moves. So if I make a move in a puzzle that I believe is the correct move for that particular position for the way that I play because I want an advantage in a different way, it's not necessarily saying that I have done the move wrong but when you're doing these puzzles yep if I make a move then it'll go well no it's not the best move so then you go well I'm, I'm no good at looking at patterns and stuff but that's the problem with doing puzzles and tactics if you want to be individual in your own thought process then you're gonna have to step away a little bit from doing tactics and you really have to develop your own thought processes that's the way I see it I know many many grandmasters, national masters, all the masters they say yes you do tactics, tactics, tactics just to get familiar with patterns and stuff like that I don't think that's the be all and end all to playing chess it's soulless it's absolutely soulless it takes away the individuality of thought and it's basically saying well if you memorize all these patterns then you're going to be you, you quids in to actually win games tactics don't teach you how to play chess the art of chess is an individual thought process a psychological process that is individual to each player that is playing it's not a robotic road system whereby a tactical puzzle is going to give you the answer to chess so that is my problem with tactics, puzzles and the way that it's rammed down our throats that yes if you keep doing them and you keep doing them you're going to improve in chess. That is a, a false fallacy, it's false, it's not the truth. Yes it can help you if you're wanting to develop 
like I say I'm halfway through this tactics book and I've, I have another book which has got loads of tactics in, tactics in there and I'll be using them with the overboard um, pieces that I've got um, to practice but to practice my own thought processes and if it falls in line with the correct procedure that is in line from the hints and tips that are given then so be it but in order for me to truly develop my put my puzzles my tactics training within chess I have to really bring my own flavor to the game so you can see it can be quite disappointing when you say doing it online because you have like your rating here and you know there's people I know that are really into the, the rating type thing so you know they'll be there hot to the trot going tactics 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 and they're wanting to get up to like the three thousands and stuff like that within the tactics training that doesn't mean your chess is of that level it just means that you know about patterns and you know about um, posi not positions but you know about the patterns that um, can bring out some tactical type of uh, response but when you're playing somebody for real over the board or playing somebody for real over on the online they're not forced to move in those ways so memorizing these specific type positions really does not hold much water yes you can memorize the concept the conceptual idea behind it but trying to memorize the patterns um, really is a little bit of a waste of time as far as I can see understanding pattern recognition understanding the concepts of pattern recognition no problems because under pressure you I suppose you can kick something out um, even in longer games yeah the pattern recognition can help you but the, the art of chess itself is the selection of your own pattern from that pattern recognition and if that pattern recognition follows the f whole process through to the end for that tactical process then so be it by each stage as an individual we want to be checking move after move after move after move to every time just in case there's a change in the situation rather than looking at it in a rote fashion of ah this is definitely going to work so we have the complete answer if that was the case we wouldn't be playing chess we wouldn't be wanting to learn how to play the different maneuvers and strategies behind chess and we would have the answers all you'd have to do is do tactics training that isn't correct and anyone saying yes just do tactics training do tactics training they're not telling you the whole story about playing chess tactics does not help you win chess games individual people win chess games with an understanding of tactical maneuvers and um, positional play strategical movements and at the end of the day you've got to have that creative flair to break the mold from any pattern recognition to create your own so that then the shock factor comes in and that's where then you start beating people who are just solely focused on tactics training so I think I've beaten up the um, tactics training type situation and uh, the puzzle training and I'm not going to make a move in this position here what I'm going to do is just highlight the potential movements that can be made and if we find the answer we'll make the move other than that I ain't going to move a piece because at the end of the day it's individual thought process so let's have a look at the pawns first got one pawn two three four five six seven seven pawns we've got one two three four five six six pawns so in essence we're, we're a pawn down okay so that's the picture so far his queen is in front of our king he does have a white square bishop but his white square bishop's not attacking this pawn here he has like a two on one on this pawn well three on one he's got the rook he's got the knight and he's got the queen attacking our pawn we've got two pieces defending we've got the knight and we've got the queen so we're in in line to lose another pawn because we've only got two pieces pieces defending 
bishop like I say is here so it's not doing much at the moment really it's not too dangerous it is cutting off our king so they are attacking this so we could bring our knight to attack I better be careful with this because I don't want to make a move right there okay so we could attack the queen with the knight so the smaller piece attacking a higher piece more advantageous but if we did do that the queen could come and just capture the pawn here because it's got support of the rook and it's got support of the knight so if we took the queen then his knight takes I'm assuming and that's not too good a position it's not clear is it it's not something that you would think well that's dynamic that's given me a good position Queen could come across with a check on the king. I'm not sure whether or not this gives an advantage. If the queen did take, the pawn takes. He still has a 2 on 1 on this pawn. So you would think that the knight would take because our rook is on his knight. If we took the knight his rook comes down yeah so that's not a winning position either so all these choices that we have to make here as to what is the better move could be a small move but the queen is covering this area so way too many things to think about to try and find the exact thing could be a small move here just attacking the queen with a pawn you wouldn't think that that would be worth much really because the queen can always just drop down. It's not going to take the pawn because the knight would take the uh, queen. So he could push down or he could push across, he could come across, he could go back, he could go back here. Obviously he's not going to go there with the discovered check from the bishop. Does it give an advantage pushing this small pawn onto them from the position? No matter where they go, say they do drop down. If they dropped down, then the rook would be able to take the knight. So they probably need to stay on that diagonal. But if they stayed on that diagonal, like we said, we have the discovered check with the bishop, knight attacking potentially. So if I had to put money on it based on the type of position that is on the board, probably pushing this pawn here. But I ain't going to do it because it's going to mess my rating up. <laughs> I've worked very hard to get to this rating here. Um, so I'm not going to mess it up because the idea being I've been through this experience of doing tactics training and it's so annoying that when I find a move then they go oh not really try a bit try harder and um, do you want a little bit of a hint and tip type situation so that's the move I potentially would go for out of all of the moves because if he comes off of this diagonal protecting the, the knight then the rook can take so he's potentially going to go here like we said Knight can come then attack his bishop, I suppose, more so than bringing it here. And the can't drop back, so he's then eventually going to have to move across. Oh, he could actually move here. No, he couldn't because the knight would be um, defending this area. So it's definitely the pawn push. But then it's going to go continue on, you know, if it's right, it's going to go continue on. Yeah. So the queen goes there, so then we're looking for the knight to come here, protecting this square so the queen can't come there because we have the discovered check on the queen. So the queen potentially comes across or comes back down to attack the pawn. Then the rook takes. So it's not really finished. Am I going to risk my 2111? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It, it sounds. 
it makes sense to me the pressure is on this knight he comes back we bring the knight here protecting this square and it's attacking the, bish the queen queen then has a choice and can go anywhere really but it's it's coming off of protecting that knight so it could come here that's quite neat actually because then he's got a diagonal through to here so we'd have to move the bishop for the rook protecting or bring the rook back down I think it's the pawn move I'm going to put my two two one eleven eleven hard work hard training I've put in for that that rating there just to show as an example <laughs> so like we've always said tactics training in its own right is not the be all and end all of chess at all this is not how to me it's not how to try and master your own gameplay because we're going to make this move now based on what we've done based on understanding potentially what the opponent can do and then if they come out with oh well no it's not exactly the way that this person played it in the game doesn't mean that what we're doing is wrong it just means that the opponent found a different way of doing it which is really annoying you know because I don't want to play like the player who played the move I want to play my own game I want to play my own tactics so this is me using my own tactics thinking a smaller piece attacking a higher piece based on our um, mantra and the answer process and I think that is it four moves that we've worked up to because we like to go for a maximum of four moves and that calculation wise he still wants to stay on there so that's one move that's two moves bringing the knight here and then after that we don't really know what the queen's going to do so that's nice steady two moves there um, blocking off because we know that the pressure is on this knight let's go for it whoa best move keep and it looking it's saying keep going now that's the point where you know keep going I'm not interested in keep going now because we can take the rook, the knight, because the knight is now free. He's given that up pretty quick, didn't actually come back and defend. So now, we have to stop and look at the situation again now and do a recalculation. Based on the opponent's response, he's not done the initial response that we actually went for. So this is the annoying thing about tactics training per se, because they don't play the way you want to play. But we're going to try and find the best manoeuvres. Is it still going for the knight here? Because if the queen comes down, let's see. If the queen comes down, our queen can take. So that's not going to happen. So taking the knight. What's his queen actually looking to do? Looking to escape? So he can't come here doesn't have a dark squared bishop he's got a two on one with a what I'll just have a one on one but his white square bishop is covering this square but I don't see that that he can take advantage of that so I think we're going to just take the knight <gasps> and we got a success oh thank you wow we didn't lose any of the puzzle rating point that'll be the last tactics trading that I do yeah, I'm, um, online in those senses there because I'm just trying to highlight the point about doing tactics training isn't playing proper chess um, you as an individual have to learn your own calculation process find your own way through and if it's not as perfect as what the um, system is suggesting it doesn't mean you're doing it wrong it just means there's different ways of actually finding advantages on the board there's higher level ways of finding advantages and lower lower ways of finding advantages so you may start off when you're doing your tactics training or your puzzling um, you may be finding lower end um, advantages but there's still advantages you know so there's nothing wrong with what you're doing so definitely don't be put off by what you see 
in the puzzles like i say i've gone halfway through this book and i've gone back to the beginning again to sort of reconfirm the processes and the concepts and the patterns but i'm always wanting to put my own individual flavor in there to try and find my own high-end strategies not the tactical soulless way more the individual practical way and if i can bring the individual practical way into my own games then it becomes more natural 